Okay, okay. Hmm. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. I was talking to a friend of mine about a reverend I used to see years ago. I believe it was on TV preaching in a plaid shirt. Now look at me today. I'm in a plaid show. shirt. Look how God works. Yes, indeed. I start with my book, The Power of Prayer. I'm getting to it, too. So then I can pass it on to another young saint so he can get some energy from it. His chosen agent. Annas came to see me. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. Acts 22, 12. Devotion is a part of the very spirit of true worship and is of the nature of the spirit of prayer. Devotion belongs to the person whose thoughts and feelings are devoted to God. Such a person has a mind given up wholly to religion and processes a, possesses a strong affliction for God and a passionate love for his house. God can wonderfully use delicate people for they are his chosen agents in carrying forward his plans. Dear God, I devote my feelings and thoughts to you and I give myself wholly up to your purpose. As your chosen agent, I want to carry forward your plans. Amen. Amen. Church, my text comes from Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. Christmas time. Why the virgin birth? Christmas time, church, in our society, it means different things to different people. To some people, church, Christmas is a time of gifts, trees, wreaths, reindeer, and Santa Claus. To some, it is a reason for uh, anger because there is so much talk about God and Jesus Christ. After all, the very word Christmas reminds us about the real reason for the season every time we say it. To some Christmas, uh, is, uh, though some Christmas is a difficult time because of poverty, loneliness, painful memories, or for loss of other reasons, lots of other reasons. The child of God church, Christmas, to the child of God church, Christmas is a time to celebrate the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. It is a time to worship, to remember, to thank God for his grace, and to rejoice that there is a Redeemer. It is a time of joy, peace, and wonder as we take the time to think about all good God did to, re to redeem us into himself. One of the issues, church, that we must confront every Christmas is the very nature of Christ himself. To be honest, we Christians claim some pretty amazing things about him. We claim that he is the son of God, we claim that he is the only way of salvation for all people in the world, in the whole world. We make the claims we make because they are what the Bible teaches us about him. One of the most amazing claims in the Bible is found in verse 4, church. It says, But when the fullness of time has come, 
God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law did you notice that middle section of the ver that verse God sent forth his son made a woman come on now is there is no mention of a man that verse and many others in the Bible makes the claim that Jesus was born of a virgin that he came into this world without the involvement of a human father the Bible claims that Jesus Christ is the product of a virgin birth church now a lot of people have problems with that after all it is impossible isn't it that's not how babies get here is it S several years ago Reebok magazine took a poll of students in a Protestant cemetery, seminary areas. they found that 56 percent of the students in Protestant uh, seminaries studying for their ministry rejected the idea of a virgin birth. The Survey uh, Research uh, Center of the University of California at Berkeley polled uh, the denominations to get their view on the virgin birth. 69% church of the American Baptists believe in the virgin birth. 66% of the Lutherans believe in the virgin birth. Of the United Protestant, 39% of the of the Episcopal, 39% uh, Protestant, uh, Episcopal, 34%. Of the Methodist, 21%. Of the Congregationists believe in the virgin birth of Christ. Robert Shaw, or or of uh, of Crystal Calif uh, C Cathedral, framed this. I could not in print or in public deny the virgin birth of Christ. But when I have something I can't comprehend, I just don't deal with it. That is the heart of a liberalism. Don't deny the truth outright, but deny it by ignoring it and refusing to preach it. Dr. John MacArthur quoted Dr. Woolwood, the uh, former president of Dallas Theologiary Seminary, who said, the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ is the central fact of Christianity upon in the whole uh, superstructure, superstructure of Christian theology depends for we stress the truth that the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ is a fundamental non-negotiable doctrine of Christianity. To deny the virgin birth church is to deny the word of God. To deny the virgin birth is to deny the deity of Jesus Christ. To deny the virgin birth is to deny the gospel. To deny the virgin birth is to, de to be lost in sin and headed to hell. Today, I want to ask and answer the question. Why the virgin birth? I want to consider this important doctrine today give you some of the clear truths found in the word of God that tells us why God chose to send his son through the womb of a virgin. Notice these truths with, uh, many, uh, with me today. The reality of the virgin birth, God sent forth the son, made a woman. Every birth is a miracle. There's something mysterious and miraculous about a man and a woman coming together in the physical union of that results in the birth of a child. But some births are more mysterious and miraculous than others. Consider, for instance, some of the other mysterious 
miracles birth mentioned in the Bible. Isaac to Abraham and Sarah. Uh, Simon to Marvel and his wife. Samuel to Echo and Hannah. John the Baptist to Zacharias and Elizabeth. There's many church strange births. While every birth is amazing, every birth is a commonplace. It's commonplace. Every child, no matter the circumstances surrounding their birth, arrive here the same way. Every birth, even the well, miraculous birth in the Bible, all occur because of the same chemistry. There was a man and a woman. There was a sperm and an egg, and a child was the result. The Bible teaches that there was something different about the birth of Jesus. God said that he would send his son made of a woman. The implication of that statement is that Jesus came into the world without the aid of a human maid, human male. Jesus church did not have a human father. Uh, that fact alone makes him makes his birth unique. That fact alone makes his birth special. That fact alone tells us that there's something unusual about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. His birth church is the fulfillment of an ancient prophecy. When Adam and Eve sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, God pronounced judgment upon them. This judgment fell upon Adam, Eve, and all their descendants. As God pronounces his sentence on the human race and upon Satan, he makes a stalling prophecy. And I will put empathy between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall burst thy head and thou shalt burst his heels. That prophecy says that the seed of the woman will destroy the serpent and its seed. What makes this prophecy so amazing is that the female does not carry the seed. The female carry the eggs. But the male provides the seed. This prophecy tells us that when the Redeemer comes, he will be human. But he will not be born through standish means the standard means. This is the first hint in the Bible that the birth of the Redeemer will be different. During the time of Isaiah, prophecy is given that sheds even more light on this miracle. Therefore the Lord himself shall give, shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel. When this prophecy was given, church, the southern kingdom of Judah was under the threat of invasion by the Abyssinians. The Abyssinians had already captured the northern kingdom of Israel and were preparing to attack Judah. God sends in Israel, uh, Isaiah, um, to King Azam with the promise that the Abyssinians will not be successful. God tell Isaiah to choose a son so that God can prove his work. As I refuse, and God himself gives the sign. In verse 14, this sign was designed to give comfort to Isaiah, but it also reaches far beyond the time of Isaiah and had its actual fulfillment in the virgin birth of the coming Messiah and redeem, Redeemer promised back in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. When Isaiah spoke of a virgin, he uses the Hebrew word. This word appears nine times in the Old Testament. Eight of those times, the word can only apply to a virgin or one who has always abstained from sexual intimacy. Besides Isaiah, the birth of this virgin born child would be for a sign 
many women, even church, even young women, have had and continue to have babies. A woman having a baby would not be a sign, but a virgin giving birth to a child would be a miraculous supernatural, supernatural sign. Church. The phrases, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, literally means the pregnant virgin shall bear a son. When this virgin becomes pregnant with this miracle birth, but will remain a virgin. In other words, she was sexually pure when she conceived. And she remained sexually pure until the child was born. When we moved into the New Testament, we find an angel coming to a man named Joseph, who is bethrown to a woman named Mary. This bethrown period or engagement, if you will, was like a marriage contract. It was a, provo a proven period. It lasted about a year and it protected both spouses. If some peep, some problem arose, there would be time to make it out before the marriage was actually consumed, consummated. During this time, the Bethune couple had very little contact, and there was certainly no physical intimacy. Yet, during this critical period, Joseph discovered that his wife-to-be is expecting a child. Come on now. He knows that he is not the father. He also knows his rep her reputation. He also knows what she claims concerning the original origin of the pregnancy. She says that she was visited by an angel and that she is going to give birth to the Son of God. Like most men, church, Joseph is aware of how babies are born. And he is concerned and confused by Mary's vision of events. In fact, he is thinking about quietly divorcing her and ending their marriage. Because he believes that she has broken their contract. While he meditates on this event, church, he is visited by an angel in a dream. The angel tells him that Mary story is indeed true and that the child would be the fulfillment of Isaiah prophecy in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 to 23. When the angel uh, referenced the prophecy of Isaiah, he calls Mary a virgin. That is the Greek word of potter. It always means virgin. It always referred to a woman who has never had sexual intercourse with a man. When Joseph hears this, he immediately goes to Mary and takes her as his wife. A woman in that day was pregnant out of red light was the object of shame, ridicule, and scorn. Joseph knew that God was the father of his child, so he willingly entered into Mary's shame and stood with her against the ridicule and accusations of the world. The whole point is this, church. When Mary conceived the Lord Jesus in her womb, she was a virgin. She remained a virgin until after the Lord Jesus was born. So, church, there you have it. The baby is clear. The Redeemer would come into this world through the womb of a virgin. The virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ is a reality as incredible as it may have seemed to us. It is entirely true. The reality of the virgin birth the result of the virgin birth made under the law 
The baby Mary gave birth to was no ordinary child. He was ordinary in the sense that he was a baby. He was ordinary in the sense that he cried, he slept, he hungered, and he did all the things other babies do. He was extraordinary in the sense that his father was God. This baby, the fulfillment of all the ancient prophecy was more than he appeared to be to all who saw him. This baby was and is the son of God. The phrases made under the law carries the idea of being subject to the law. It simply means that the, this son of God was a man like every other man. He was to be a, a obedient to the will of God. He was to live his life under the law of God. It just means that he was a man. But church, this child was more than just an ordinary baby. He was more than an ordinary man. He was more than an ordinary Jew who was subject to the law of Almighty God. This baby, this child, this man was and it and is God in human flesh. When Jesus Christ was born into the world, church, God took upon himself the form of a man. God literally became flesh. That is the testimony of the Apostle John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. This is also the testimony of the Apostle Paul. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robber, robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took himself took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in, in a fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death and even the death of the cross The result of the virgin birth is that God became man, church. He was born like a man. He lived like a man. He died like a man. In the gospel, Jesus Christ exhibited all the signs of being human. He had a human pondering, parentage. He had a human body, soul, and spirit. Body. For in that, she had poured this ornament on my body, she did it for my burial. So, then said unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death, tarry ye here and watch with me. Spirit, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit and have said thus he gave up the ghost he looked like a man to the Samarians of women to the Jews to Mary Magdalene to possess flesh and blood he grew he asked questions he increased in wisdom he prayed he was tempted he hunger he thirst he was weary he slept, he loved, he had compassion. He was anger and grieved. He wept, he experienced joy, church. He was troubled, he sweat a drops of blood. He suffered, he bled, he died, he was buried. Yet, while he was and is a man, 
He was and is also God. He is uh, optimate. He is up, optimate over disease, over Satan, over demons, over men, over nature, over sin, over tradition, and over Sabbath, over the temple, over the death itself. Physical death, spiritual death. He knew the frankness of the crowd, the, the flickness of the crowd. He knew the wickedness of the scribes and Pharisees. He knew the problems of the discipline of his disciples. He knew the whereabouts of Nathaniel. He knew the history of Samaritan women. He knew the true nature of Judas. He received worship, church, from the angel, from the wise man, from the leper, from a Jewish ruler, from a heartbroken mother, from the mother of James and John, from the manic of God, from the man born blind, from Thomas, from the woman at the empty tomb, from his disciple. He forgive sin. He possess all body. He is the source of life itself. He is created. He is a creator of all things. He is preserver of all things. He alone can meet all our needs. He receives our prayer. He is the final judge. Judge. Uh, judge. So church. The result of the virgin birth is that God became a man. Yet he was as much God as if he had never been a man and as much as man as he as if he had never been God. Theologians call this the hypothesis union. It refers to two natures, deity and humanity existing together in the person of Jesus Christ without either nature mixing with or hindering the other nature. I call this amazing. And that is the result of the virgin birth. The reality of the virgin birth, the result of the virgin birth, the reason for the virgin birth. To redeem then that were under the law, that we might receive the adaption of sons. Why did God go to all this effect to bring his son into the world? Why didn't God use some other great man to accomplish his perfect plan? Why not use an Abraham, a Moses, or a David? Why did God have to be have to use something like the virgin birth to bring his redeemer into the world? He did it the way he did it because no mere human was qualified to redeem sinners from their sins. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, he died spiritually. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. When Adam sinned in the garden, he became a sinner. Then, when he reproduced with Eve, he passed along his sinful spiritual conditions to all his children, and they in turn passed it on to their children so that every person that ever born, would ever been born into this world, since Adam fell, has been born in sin. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men that for all have sinned. That means Abraham was a sinner, church. Moses, a sinner. David was a sinner. Your parents are sinners. Your children are sinners. I am a sinner. Guess what? You are a sinner too. That's just the way it is. Since man is a sinner, church, he is under the condemnation and judgment of God. Several verses clearly teach this truth. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
He that believeth on him is condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of, of God. He that believed on the Son had everlasting life. And he that believed not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abided on him. Since man is a sinner, church, he cannot do anything or pay any price to redeem himself. Any, anything man offered, he did, he did would be ten, ten, uh, tainted by his sin. But when we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do filth fade as a leaf and our unique our inequities like the wind have taken us away and every priest standeth daily ministering and often oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sin the only way sinful men can ever be delivered from his sins would be through the sacrifice of a sinless man his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did what sinful men could never do when he died on the cross. And every priest standing daily, minister, and offering sometimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For me, for by one offering he had perfected for every forever them that are sanctified. That is what God accomplished in the death of Christ on the cross. For if by one man's offers death reign by one, much more than much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ therefore as the office of one judgment came upon all the all to conduct condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gifts came upon all men into justification of life as and for as by one man obedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall, shall many be made righteous. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him strictly, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded by trespass, by transgressions. He was bruised for an inequity. The, ch the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with, and with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the inequities of all of us. When God sent Jesus into this world, he sent into the world a man who was sinless and perfect. Why, why did uh, no sin? Who did no sin, church? Neither was Gael found in his mouth. And yet, and ye know that he was manifested to take away all our sins. And in him, no sin. When Jesus died on the cross, church, he did not die for his own sin, but he died for the sins of the lost. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of God for him. Who has 
own, who his own self bear our sins in our own body on the tree, that we begin dead to sins shall live unto righteousness by whose strife we were healed. When Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God, died on the cross, he redeemed us from the curse of sin and from the demands of the law. He purchased us from our slavery and sin and made possible our adoption into God's family as his son. He did what no other man could ever have done. For as much as he knew that we were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold and from our vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spots for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, and if, and if children, the heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. God did it the way he did it because no other way would work. Man had sinned and man was condemned to death. The only way to change that was for a perfect man to die. But the reason God sent his son into the world through the virgin birth was to guarantee the birth of a perfect sinless savior who could bear the sins of the laws and satisfy the perfect demands of God. The reason God sent Jesus through a virgin was so that no one could make the mistake of believing that Jesus was just like all other men. He did it so that none could accuse Christ of being a sinner or of having a sin nature. If Jesus Christ had come through the womb of a non-virgin, using the same process of conception God used to bring him through Mary, he would still have been sinless. But there would be, there would, would have been no way to prove that a human male was not his father. Since he was born of a virgin, without aid of a human male, and since his mother was still a virgin when he was born, we can have confidence, church, that he could and did pay for our sins when he died. In the conclusion, church, without the virgin birth, there is no Savior. Without the virgin birth, there is no salvation. Without the virgin birth church, there is no Christmas or any other reason to celebrate. If Jesus Christ came into the world just like the rest of us did, then he is no different than we are. He himself is a sinner in need of salvation. All his claims to be God and to be the Messiah are all a bunch of lies. Hear me well. He is who he claimed to be. He was born of a virgin, just as the Bible says. He was and was born without sin. He lived without sin. And he died. And when he died, he died to take away sin. You can believe the Bible. You can believe the gospel. You can trust Jesus Christ with the salvation of eternal soul, with your eternal soul. You can believe this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish 
but have everlasting life. And this, that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For this and for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord shall be saved. And this, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to him, to me, I will in no wise cast out. And this, wheresoever, uh, 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 wherefore, he is able also to give them to the utmost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever live to make intercession for them. If you will believe that the Bible says about God by Jesus Christ, church, you can say with Paul, I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against the day that day. Have you believed the gospel? If you have, you can rejoice this Christmas, for you have received the greatest gift ever given to anyone. If you haven't believed the gospel, you have no reason to celebrate at Christmas or at any other time of the year. Church, if you need to be saved, come to Jesus now and call on him by faith. If you are saved, come to him and rejoice in who he is and what he has done for you on salvation. Why the virgin birth? So you can be saved in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. The little thing of life. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The possibility of prayer ought to be seen in its accomplishment in earthly matters. Prayer reaches to everything that concerns people, whether it be the body, the mind, or the soul. Prayer takes in the needs of the body, such as food and clothes, and concerns itself with business and finance. In fact, everything that belongs to this life, as well as those things that have to do with the eternal interests of the soul, the achievements of prayer are seen not only in the large things, but also in the small things. Dear Lord, I thank you for your hand in the important earthly matters, but also for your presence in the little things of life. Amen. Amen, amen. If this message has been a blessing to you, find yourself a Bible-based church and become a part of the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. God bless. Amen.